Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Yesterday I did a no unit precision strike deck, but I was feeling like taking it to the next level. And today we're gonna to be doing a no unit guerrilla tactics deck. This deck does have a couple extra provisions, so you have a bit more room to do some crazy things in the upper end here. So let's get into it. This deck is completely toxic. It's not tier one, but it can certainly compete with those decks because of a few main removal factors. Of course, you see the Yurden off the get go, and we'll get to that in a second here. But the goal of the deck is to obviously control your opponent and set up an ultimate roll punish as well. So we're able to take care of engines, and then we have the master roll punish. So, you know, Simlas is great for deck thinning, it's great for getting out some engines with Bountiful Harvest, it's great for reaching for double rebukes or double bombs if we're looking to remove engines in early game. Don't be shy to use Simlas in round one because it does help thin out that deck a little bit and gives us a little bit of carryover from the Bountiful Harvest if we go and choose those. Of course, Forest Protector just makes sense because we have so many nature cards. We have the Bountiful Harvest, we have the Nature's Rebuke, and Circle of Life. And you can sort of use these, you know, depending on the situation, and we'll get into that in the gameplay. So you'll see where I choose those and why I'm choosing those. Now, Geralt Yurden, Geralt Yurden, I think I should know how to say this by now, but uh, Geralt's a win condition in here. So because we have Guerrilla Tactics, guys, we're able to set up the role perfectly for the ultimate reset. Now, you know, a lot of times Geralt Yurden's a, a gamble because you can't really determine where the opponents are putting their cards and you have to put in cards into your deck to, you know, move things to different rows to get a perfect Yurden. In this case, it's just naturally set up for us and our leader definitely helps. So, you know, leader could be used to help complete kills from our specials here or just set up the ultimate Yurden depending on the matchup. So, you know, great win condition here. We have the Quen to pull it. Quen's also going to be pulling Brayhand, and that's part of the reason why Brayhand's in there. Of course, roll manipulation is great, and just getting that extra removal is awesome. We're not running a heat wave in this list, so I want to have some tall punish, and Brayhand will be doing that as well. Of course, Call of the Forest is just to make sure we don't miss like a Dunka or a Gord or Simlas, for example. So that's why that's in there. And one of our big payoff cards is going to be the Gord. So we're able to play tons and tons of specials and hand buffs to get Gord to 15, 20 points. And that's going to be more likely a finisher depending on the matchup. You know, uh, it could be Yurden finisher, it could be Gord finisher. It really depends on, you know, the game, for example, and what sort of removal we might anticipate. But uh, you have either option at your disposal. Trial of the Grasses is something that I would play normally in a Skellige deck, but I felt spicy. Wanted to throw it in here because it has so many potential cards to, you know, benefit from, right? We can use it offensively to remove something that's six power on their side of the playing field, or we can use it defensively for a ton of points off the Geralt Quen, off the Yurden, or off the Madoc. So again, great options there, and it trades up so well. It's just such a good card, you know, six provisions, and we're getting... 10 boost you know it's nuts worst case scenario we we do it off the madoc for nine points i think it's just worth having in here and of course depending on the matchup like i said perfect removal gets rid of you know five with an armor or six point cards so i like it quite a bit maxi is to help with our deck consistency because we have all these pieces and we don't want to have them all kind of you know coming in the wrong way so you know madoc and brick we have um, the Quen that can get kind of rough. We have the Simlas where maybe we want to pull into, you know, something, um, something like the Bountiful Harvest, but, you know, we're, we're, we're getting dupes in hand and stuff like that. Anyways, the Maxi gives us the opportunity to go and look at our deck and reshuffle and, and, and get things sorted out a bit better if we don't like what we're going to be pulling into. And, of course, we got removal options here, no shortage of them. I wanted to put Pyrotex because we need some proactive plays. You know, the only proactive plays we really have would be like the Bountiful Harvest plays, the Dunka play, maybe Sabretooth, and then of course, you know, Pyrotex. So we have that there. And then Squirrel is just good for the Skellige matchup where they have, um, you know, graveyard manipulation and stuff like that. We're able to punish that. We have like the Flying Redanian if we're playing against Syndicate and, you know, Every faction's got something that you just want to banish or get rid of, so it works out pretty well. Now, let's get into the gameplay. I got four games for you guys today, and if you enjoy the content, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We're almost at a thousand subs, and it's been a goal of mine for the last year and a half, give or take, since I started doing YouTube. So let's get this going with this video here today, guys, and uh, jump right into the gameplay. Man, I did it again. 
I got halfway through the first game and realized I didn't hit record. I gotta stop doing this, man. Either way, we're back with another one here, and we got Nature's Gift as the first matchup. Right away, you see the Yurden in hand. We're gonna hold on to that, because that is so valuable in this matchup. It doesn't matter how big the rows get, because we could just punish them in the end. So, you know, taking some mulligans here, I'd probably tuck away Gord at this point, because we can pull into that later. We want to have sort of a hand to go into a long round one. And of course, Yurden is probably not going to be spent in round one as long as, you know, it's like the last card we play and, you know, we take him into a short round two with a win on evens consideration. So, again, we don't want to have two cards that we can't play in the round. Now, pushing that back, we have to prioritize taking out the Dunka and we can just go and take a circle on that next turn. We want to prevent them from getting any sort of carryover, and this shows me that they're probably looking to boost it into fall. It's unfortunate, but at least they can't use the damage on it here. We have to be a little bit careful with our leader charges because we want to make sure that, uh, you know, they're, they're put to good use at least. If we don't carry them over to round 3, we want to make sure that they're actually used to take out, you know, some sort of engine. Um, I'm just really putting value on removing Dunka here. Long run with carryover is not very good. Um, you know, it, it sort of messes up our whole Yurden thing, because we can only Yurden one row, so it, it gets a little bit tricky. We boost the Dunka here, so now R stays at a rebuke range, which is kind of nice, and we start establishing some carryover here. Now, they haven't really developed themselves too much within the round, so I'm not too concerned here. I guess they had a random Pectin bomb, which is fine. You know, I feel pretty comfortable diving into a double sim last, going for the Bountiful Harvest because we want to sort of push like a lose on even situation for them here. So, you know, at least let's see if they can respond with a sim loss of their own. So putting these down, it just gets kind of ugly for them. They can remove one this turn, but they can't remove both. And if they take sim loss here, then we have a chance to fire them both off, which is great. Now, in some different matchups, I might take, I might not spend, like, the leader so fervously, but, you know, in this specific matchup, their leader is meant for, you know, kind of one or two purposes, and, you know, they've used two of the three charges, you know, and they're on blue coins, so, again, um, I'm just looking at it as, like, a trade, more or less. It's unfortunate that the Sabertooth gets buffed in hand, but I think at this point we just play it for points. And because Dunk is still working, we want to get rid of it just so that we have it out there. And, you know, in this matchup with all those Treants spawned, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to keep the Sabretooth for later on. Now, I see Lock. I'm thinking that's coming out for Dunka, but apparently not. Sabretooth gets the Lock, and that's just fine because, again, it's not like it's getting any value here for us, so... We might as well just deal with it. I'm putting this back here now because if we want to play down a long round, we want to at least let the bleeding, you know, be effective. Maybe we can provoke like a bigger, like a leader charge, push to the back row so that, um, you know, everything's sort of lined up and boosted if for whatever reason we want to use Yurden. Now that's a little bit annoying because we wanted to bray hand that as well. You know, having it as like the rightmost unit, we put it in perfect bray hand removal range. I'm thinking about ways that we can take away that token now from the range throw. Um, Maddox click, if we snipe it's a consideration. It's not great for the Yurden, but again, we optimally don't want to play the Yurden here. And you know, we can just put down the pyro tech and maybe look for a snipe. That's fine, it's within reach here, and you know, I would still play Bray in here, because I don't see a reason not to. And then that just takes us to within one point. We save sort of, you know, a pretty good play for later on Forest Protector, and we have the Yurden as like a final say. So, I'm feeling pretty confident. For whatever reason, people love to put FMA on the back row and just start boosting that row. It just seems like a, a habit for whatever reason. So. I'm looking at that being sort of the case here of just 
that range roll looking really good for resetting later on. Now we don't really want to push in this round because it's really easy for us to get caught and um, losing uneven. It's also a little bit tricky for us to push because we don't have too many proactive plays and to see one of the Bountiful Harvest come down here, it's kind of nice because we know they don't have two for Simlast later on. Going on to round three, you see our deck leans out pretty well. When you pull Quinn, we played Brahan earlier, tuck back the Yurden for the extra value there. We have a fair amount of bombs. I don't value making a bomb quite as much here, but again, we don't really want to pull a Maxi either. It's kind of one of those things where we could fish for a rebuke, but is it worth it? Hard to say. And now we just got to start working on removing these things. I don't know if we're going to get a better making a bomb, so always use it first, right? Because next round, like next turn, if they play on the melee row, then it really doesn't give us the best effect of that. So we can just go ahead and take that first. We have the opportunity to take trials on the Ethne, or we can just use it on like our Quen, and that's something I'm thinking about at this point. You know, obviously we wish that the Madoc went on the range row, but it's, it is what it is. I'd like to take out the other Dryad in the meantime by clicking. We have to respect it and get rid of the Whisperer right away. So Madoc decides to behave here, that's perfect. And so when you look at this situation where you have a choice of taking either the Ethne or the Hamadryad, I think that it's preferred that you always take the Hamadryad for removal because it does have that separate clause of boosting by two whenever you play, uh, when you put Vitality on it, right, every turn. So it just, it, it could potentially amount to more points overall. And, you know, we do have that Yurden reset, but again, we want to sort of control what we can control because we, at this point in the game, aren't, you know, in much control of how they're putting their rows together. So, now I know they're probably going to be stacking range row because the Gezras comes down. Seen a return of Gezras lately, and it's a perfect Yurden situation. Just struggling for proactivity here, so we'll take the click on the Maddox so we don't lose, like, points on our side of the playing field this turn. Perfect, you'll love to see it. It's really too bad these trees are going on the melee row, but it, it's fine. Now, Protector comes down. We're, in this event, probably going to take a Bountiful Harvest, get the most points, and, you know, we don't have... We don't have access to, uh, really any more specials, so we probably just go ahead and take that. You know, there's consideration to take the damage there, having looked back at it. Um, it would have ultimately played for an extra two points because they would have rebuked it regardless. However, we would have had the the boost, the the two damage when we played it. Could have even put it on range row to hit the ones. But if the game was decided by two points, then you know it is what it is. But uh, it's not as close as it looks right here. So looking at this, Yurden comes down, big slam on the range row. Huge reset, down by five. So, you know, we could have had it in a situation where they would have had 28 points. Again, a win's a win's a win, right? Moving on to overwhelming hunger. We got monsters up next, guys. And I did a little bit of an experimental play in this game here, and it seemed to work out. I don't know if it's the correct line every time, but we'll certainly get to that point. Like, when I make it, I'll tell you why I made it. Maddox goes back. Squirrel's got like a couple potential decent targets here, so I'm thinking about keeping it. But, uh, you know, we want a bit more to play here. Rebuke's not very good when we're playing against Deathwish. Unless it's for a consume engine, right? So they're going first. We see Sunset Wanderers and Hand off to go. Now, this is that controversial play that I was talking about here. So, 
I'm looking at taking a circle of life. And I know you're thinking, well, why would you go and do that, right? But they have other cards potentially that can proc the Death Wish ability of the Harpy. And basically, I'm taking a gamble here and banking on the fact that, okay, listen, if they can't use their leader and maybe a Baya and just whatever else they might have to create that, you know, um, Death Wish proc, then that was actually a good play because now they're not going to be getting you know, six times three on the side of the board as well, right? So, again, we see how it pays off. I don't know if I would have done it had we gone first, but because we're on red coin, it gives us the ability to experiment a little bit and see kind of, you know, how some of the lines of play results at the end of the round. So, Sabertooth goes down, and more than likely, they're going to have one row where there's going to be damage taken. So, And we have it here, so the back row gets damaged. Now, they could proc the ability twice on the Foglet, so I'm thinking while we're just here and at it, let's just kind of lay off from playing Dunga for a little bit, and then we can just sort of get that out of the way. Now, Dunka could potentially get removed anyways, and Dunka could get Marooned anyways, so, you know, I... I felt like it wasn't absolutely necessary to put Dunkin' down early. We can always look at saving it for later or just playing it for the damage that it has. So let's go in with that. And honestly, I'm thinking like we're in no rush at this point. You know, they're not up by a whole lot of points. Why don't we just drop something down like the Pyrotech and, you know, we can just negate that damage that we would have otherwise received on the melee roll by putting it on range. And again, we have uh, 11 points, they have 14, it's very close. And right now, Pyrotech has good options. Everything's four power. Nothing's Death Wish that hasn't been used yet. And we see Haunt on blue, so they're really, really thirsty to get this round win. So, obviously, you know, what we've been doing has been working. It's, it's received the right response here. I'm thinking about passing on this because I'm thinking that they're going to be, you know, putting out tons of points. So I'm just kind of looking for a pass. We take the circle there because, you know, it does kind of give us a little bit of carryover. And if they play here, the Sunset Wanderers is going to come out of hand. So, you know, imagine they play. We take Dunka, carried over with some extra points into round two. We didn't really commit a lot, guys, really, for what it's worth. But we saw the haunt, and that's like a huge winning condition for us here. What's it going to be? It's tough. It's tough. You know, you're in a situation like that. You know, it's tough to not to not pass. Sometimes you really want to pa like pass and you know whatever. But when you put down haunt, you're sort of committing. And I look at this like, why would we? engage at this point because we laid off from playing Dunka for long enough that it's not really the best move it doesn't put us ahead we'd have to play again and you know we saw some big commitments there 13 provisions off the sunset wanderers down on the board and haunt being 14 provisions so 27 and two cards you know um a lot of the consumes that they could potentially have are out of the way and again we draw into a beautiful hand here Talk that back so we can pull them with Simlas and Squirrel at this point goes away. We want to find something that has a bit more points. We have pass cards here. Pyrotech is a great pass card every time. You can even use Dunka as a pass card if you have nothing better. And so they're just going to force it. I guess that's their way of, you know, seeing some commitments from us is really just kind of testing it out here. Dunka puts us ahead by one point. Best time to play it. We do have to worry about Mana Core, we do have to worry about Maruna for when we play like our Pyrotech. You know, there's a couple things that are kind of nasty, but we'll figure it out. Now, I'm thinking once I see the Harpy, the Selenio Harpy, 
and um, the mushy truffle. I'm thinking we got to get rid of this right now. So I believe it's worth the leader charges here because if they put down another one, Harpy Egg's going to spawn, Golden Frost's going to come out, they're going to start triggering this Death Wish, and it's going to be nasty, you know? So I don't really want to play into that too much. So they have a big tempo swing here. It gives us no other option really but to play Simlas, and it's a great thing we held on to this because now we can just reach for the two Bountiful Harvest, continue the carry over with Dunka, and just get a couple engines down there. And if we can pull into at least, yeah, there we go. We've got reach with our leader. Now I'm thinking just to use the leader because Dunka hasn't been taken care of, and we'll push that back because I, I I don't want to, you know, make our reset on the Toad Prince even worse. Just like keep the nice tall units at the front. So now, you know, when you play something like Crimson Curse, you're committing quite a bit, but it's very difficult to come back from this sort of lead here. You know, once we have those two sorcerers established on the playing field, you know, I wanted to boost that up to get the Bountiful Harvest. There was consideration to purify the, the back sim last, but it just it wasn't as good, because now we can just recycle. You know what I mean? It's very difficult to come back from that. And, you know, we don't look to click the py Pyrotech here because they have a lot of 1s and 3s and awkward numbers on the board. You know, extra carryover from Dunka. Gord is huge. 10 points plus the 8 already. Yurden's there. Brand's boosted. Forest Tractor's boosted. We're going to be getting another, another Bountiful Harvest in round 3. So, a lot of good things. If we could just find the finishing pieces to the puzzle, we're good to go. And we maintained card advantage, which is huge. Gives us that perfect Yurden last say. They can't avoid it. They're going to have to boost up and do what they do. And we're just going to punish them for it. So looking at the deck. Um, you know it would be nice to have Quen. It would be nice to have Call, But it's also very risky at this point. And I just don't think it's worth it. You know maintaining that card advantage is just better. So here we go. Now we have to... This is my Maruna check, and I'm hoping that they don't have it, because this is going to amount to tons of points if, you know, they're not playing Maruna from hand on turn one, so... I mean, you had to expect it, right? So, you know, I have to respect the fact that maybe they have some specials as well, so we want to take care of that as soon as possible and just get that Madoc back out there. And because... Yurden is boosted and Brand's boosted, then it just makes sense that we can either take um, an offensive trials or we can just take it on Madoc at this point. No other bombs, so it works out quite well. Now, Brahan's one of those cards that it's like either very good or not great at all, and the short rounds are perfect examples, or when people play around it. So you see here, they're not stacking the row, so it's a little bit frustrating. So we'll just play a little bit more proactively, boost the Madoc, and just sort of wait until we have a better opportunity to go ahead and bray in here. We know it's probably going to happen at some point. They got two cards. Unless they put one on each roll, but even the leader would take them ahead, right? Unless they just go very tall, which I don't think that they would do. So I decided to go and take Yurden here just because it felt kind of awkward. Um, you know, we'll get the Brahan one way or another. I figured the Brahan would, would probably be better in the long run than just playing it for zero points. And of course, they did the Yurden check. Mamuna's down. That's huge points. But if you look at the bright side here, Brayan goes down and takes up the nine right away. They will beg. They always... Now, pretty much, like, whatever they're going to play at this point, I don't see it working. Detlaf only gets one consume. Heat wave is not enough points. Here comes the Detlaf. So 37. And, you know, Gord's just too much. Gord coming down for 22 points. It doesn't even keep it close. And with a lot of Deathwish going on right now, that's a perfect example, guys. Moving on to another game here. This one's really cool because it's an example where Yurden might not see a lot of value, but it's a good testament to how the deck still works, regardless of it not working in every matchup. So stick around for this one because a lot of um, 
syndicate going around right now is more like the bounty style of play so i wouldn't doubt that this is going to be very similar to that right off the off the bat And, you know, just removing these engines one by one as they come because we can. So many different options for removal, ways to ping down units. It really is quite satisfying to play this type of deck. And, you know, you don't have to use Yurden. You can use, like, an Igni. Use Heat Wave. You could cycle back in the Double Lacerate. Ultimately, if you have the access to stack the row, you kind of just want to roll punish. So, you know, as long as you're doing something like that, it's fine. I just felt like, you know, playing Yurden. Tax Collector goes down. And, whoa, <laughs> close. Uh, take making a bomb here, perfect removal on that. Maddox puts us ahead. That's annoying, you know, um, at this point, like, I'll make them work for the coins because we want to see some sort of spender come down, so... Probably the best thing to do here would be to put down the making a bomb just as it is. It still keeps us ahead, and like I said, make them work for their coins. One thing I don't like is having Sabretooth in your hand and getting it boost by all the hand buffs and you're probably wondering why we even run it it's not so much for the effect that it does because you know you you might be fortunate like if i go first and i'm on blue and i play that first and then they have to respond to it well pretty much whatever they play we're getting that that tiger to work but um you know if they have spawn cards they can play around it very easily now it just provokes them to row stack that's basically what it is, you know, it gets them putting everything on that one row and then we just, we hit them with the band hammer, we put down the Yurden, so that's pretty much what it is, right? Otherwise, you know, you could substitute for that for something else, like a synthesis or whatever, some sort of hidden points card, basically. But I think it serves its purpose here. So we did win on even. And one of the most important things we want to get out of the opponent would be like the... I'm seeing bounties, so we know it's going to be more that direction. We want to get out the horse and freak show, and we want to see that leader commitment. So, you know, it just makes sense here to put down a couple engines and see how they respond to them, because they only have so many removal options, and, you know, then they're forced to maybe boost in round three or just use their coin inefficiently. So, you know, porting down the double bountifuls here, we'll get some carryover in our hand, and then we can kind of, you know, assess as the round goes on and see what they play. But putting down two sorceresses right now is like very demanding, because they know that if they don't remove these right now, it gets ugly quickly. And, you know, it would take like a horse in plus a leader swing to get rid of them in one turn. <clears throat> Professor doesn't do it. Horse and Junior doesn't do it. Like a payday wouldn't do it. So here we go. That's exactly what we're looking for. And the big swing. And, you know, it feels bad, but it's really not that bad. You know, uh, we, we got exactly what we're looking for here, and I feel like we can just put an end to their spending and just nudge it down with something here. Cycling out the Madoch again is not a bad idea. Gives it like a nice little rebuke finish. Um, you know, it shouldn't be too bad. So that's like one big problem out of the way. We have to worry about the Graydon. You know, because we don't want to have something too tall that gets removed that way. 
we have to worry about. Horson would be kind of ugly too. So keeping these things in mind, let's just start trading rebukes and stuff. Again, I don't look at this like it's going to be a 2-0. I look at it like we'll probably play to like 3 cards or so, 3-4 cards, and then we'll look at going to round 3. You know, seeing Vivaldi Bank here is really nice too. Starting to get some Brayden uh, ideas, but uh, it's hard to say. Brayden might not work in this round. The Adrenaline 3 makes it a little bit awkward too in this situation, because we don't really want to play into it too much. And you know, it's one of those things where do we click or do we not click? We give them the coins, however we deny points on their side of the playing field. It's very easy for them to remove something like that now, so it gets tricky. Go on a protector here because I really want to see more commitments from them. And we'll just take this here and was looking for a sorceress, but you can't win them all. That's fine. Go ahead and click that and it just keeps us in front here and less things for them to interact with as well. So this might provoke Professor, this might provoke like a, oh, there's the horse and so they go ahead and take that, remove both, and again, not a lot of coins, so we've prevented a lot of that carryover from occurring here. Now, Quen is awkward because it pulls into Yurden, which, again, in the beginning of the game I mentioned this wouldn't be the best matchup for Yurden. So, resetting the back row is not very good. Resetting the front row does nothing. Brayhan right here plays for just the points it's worth. We don't have any... Um, you know, like, I do have the option to go for Trial if we go ahead and play the Quen Yurden thing here, but I just feel like we might see an opportunity, if any, in round three to take that play and to use the Trial. So, it's one of those things where we could probably just pass. I was thinking about taking Trial on, uh, maybe, like, the Freak Show, but, again, it's not like they can use it anyways, so... Go ahead and take that here. We saw some pretty healthy commitments. I mean, we made a couple ourselves, but again, pulling out engines that we knew were going to get removed anyways is not really a big deal. It's better that we have that now instead of like the last round play. So just sort of looking at our hand state here, we want to get rid of Yurden because we're pulling it out with the Quen, and I don't really want Circle of Life. I'd rather have Dunka and spend it for the points. Um... You know, there's consideration to mulligan that back. Pulling Maxi is bad. Pulling Maxi is horrible because, um, you know, six base power gives them perfect bounty. Just makes it very tough. And it's one of those things where I think that I want to take Leader Siggy instead of Trial here, because I think we might have a better Trial still. I'm holding on to it, because it's ultimately worth more points, you know, because of the flexibility. Now, getting rid of Siggy is very important, because normally when you see a Siggy, you'll see a Caesar. And Caesar, with a full bank, would boost their Siggy quite a bit with Jackpot. It would boost it by an additional 9 points, you know. That would make the Yurden good, but again, depending on the row separation, you know, I, I would rather just get rid of it. I'm hoping that they have, like, at this point, like a Sea Jackal or something like that that they'll play, that they'll go and boost with all their coins. And we don't want to remove too much here because we're looking at, you know, developing the board state so we can use a good effective Brayan. So just maxi down, and it doesn't really matter what we do here, like, honestly. And 
And it's one of those things where Graydon comes down, so I'm not too worried about any more tall removal. The only exception to that would be the Marils if they have one in their deck, but I'm not overly concerned about that because I believe that we still have enough points to win even if Marils were to come in and take out the Brayon. Seeing that's kind of annoying, to be honest. So, I'm holding off. I use Trials there because I want to have, uh, I want to see a boost. I, I really do. Something that we can just reset with the Yurden, right? And honestly, it feels better to take, you know, to keep the circle in this event. Maxi, like pulling into Maxi was not very good. So at this point, we can just go ahead and take that with Yurden. Now, what's nice is that they both have shields on Adrenaline, so even if they want to dish bleeding to the back row, if that's the only spender, they can't. So effectively, we're only losing two points at the end of our last turn. So, you know, if they can go tall, then that's great for them, but Caesar comes down, so we did make the right play. Now, having played Yurden last, we would have gotten maybe... I mean, it's not really a big deal. It's a couple more extra points. Like, if I lost the game in that case, I would have felt bad about it, but... You sort of just play for whatever the case, you know, whatever you, whatever feels more comfortable, you know, depends on the match in some cases, like, I felt like maybe Surprise Tall Punish would have been in place of Caesar, so. Now this is a really good example of, it does suck that we go first, but it's a good example of how Yurden would get some good payoff here. The problem is, we're going first, and they have really good momentum, so it's going to be very tricky to keep that Yurden for round three, because they might try and force it out in round one. So Necker's there, we can just go ahead and remove that. Easy bomb. And just really work at getting that carry over here. Like, that's the goal. They play little engines, we remove them, and we get carry over, and then we try to find a way out of the round. Little bit of a greedy play here. I believe we click Maddox and take another bomb, which is fine. The bomb still trades well because, you know, the Brux is going to thrive. I don't know if they're doing like a Relics version or what the case might be, if it's just classic Thrive. Usually when you see Force of Nature, you're seeing Kashi. Could be Kikimor, could be a lot of things, so... Emlodeth comes down. I was kind of worried here because I felt like, you know, they could potentially take Emlodeth's Wrath and remove the Dunka. But I didn't have a solid answer because the only answer we could do within one turn would be basically putting down Yurden and using Dunka. So I wasn't super comfortable with that or even just putting down Yurden and using Madoc. But again, probably wasn't the best, you know, wasn't the best way I wanted to spend it. And I just felt like, okay, you know, I'll sooner lose on even and just figure it out later than dealing with it now. Toad Prince is huge, and again, I really don't want to spend this Yurden, like... So, with the next couple plays, it's me really just trying to avoid doing that. Uh, Simlas here is consideration. We get a little bit more carryover. We get a little bit more tempo to help us push out of the round. Can, I was thinking about taking the double circles, but I felt like I just reached for another sorceress, and I didn't find it, which was really annoying. 
this does take away from the Yurden as well. And so I click it here just to deny Sabbath or make it a little bit more difficult for them to get Sabbath, but it does kind of put us in an awkward state of the round, so I'm starting to accept the fact that we're probably going to have to use Yurden to get out of the round here. And it's one of those things, because we have Gord and Yurden in hand, if I was to replay this game, I probably would have used it sooner. I think the greed was really what got the best of me here and really put us in a bad spot, but I want to show you guys basically, like, the most optimal situations you'll be in and then some of the more tricky, like, awkward situations you'll be in, so... That's kind of annoying. Um, you know, at this point, I'm like, alright, we gotta stop greeting it a little bit take a Dime Meridian here, and we can use Dunka and just remove it. Like, we've already lost a bit of points from the Yurden because, you know, we tried to just prolong using it, so we might as well just prevent losing points with that as well. And if they stack beside it, like, I'm thinking, okay, they're going to put down, like, a She Who Knows or something to establish carryover. Maybe, maybe a Mamuna to, like, really take it on even. But no. Slams the Kashi. Range row, which sucks. And then just goes ahead and puts that down. So, that's annoying. <laughs> you know, at this point, like, Kashi is a lot of points if we let it, you know, live unattended. So, it felt appropriate to go ahead and take our removal here with the brand. Just click that. It sucks that it's not really gonna, you know, keep us, like, too far ahead. Click the mat off because at this point I'm thinking just slow, let's deny the Sabbath. And just more consequences of not playing the Yurden when we could have earlier. You know, like I said, looking back at this, I'm really just... Okay, one more chance. Maybe there's something you don't want to commit at this point, right? You know, we'll have to use our last leader. And we'll have to use Yurden next turn in order to get out no matter what. But again, if we can avoid it, I'm really trying to avoid it. This is the last opportunity they have to prevent it. Um, that was a curveball. <laughs> was not expecting that at all. So, you know, you just go and take it. Just go and take it here. And I want to make sure, like, if they put down She Who Knows, they're getting, um, 11 points because of the Thrive. So I just want to keep it ahead. So if they decide to play, they got to play both. And again, not a proud Yurden but an effective one because we did see Leader, we did see Kashi, we did see Bloody Mistress, we did see uh, Effigy, we saw Imlarith. We, you know, like a lot of the cards that we would have reset have already been used, which makes it a little bit easier for us here. So we have Gord, we've got Forest Protector, we've got, you know, let's get rid of the greedy stuff here and just keep it simple. Trial would be nice, a bomb would be nice, and uh, really that's about it. A lot of provisions are spent for them here. I'm just doing a provision count. I like to do that between round C, kind of, okay, how much has been spent? What can we, you know, expect maybe in the deck based off of what we've already seen? Kind of gives me an idea to how to play the last round. So always do graveyard checks, you know, just to stay fresh on these things here. And that's probably about the best hand we're going to get. Saber would be perfect. And we don't need anything else. Witch's Sabbath could be a thing in their deck as well, which is maybe why they played some other cards early. You know, that's something I'm thinking about when I'm looking at the graveyard now. I'm like, alright, so what's been spent? Bloody Mistress would be annoying, but really, 
that and Kashi are the only two that I'd really be uh, annoyed with. Easy removal there. I just wanted to get rid of that because if we wait another turn, it's up to five and then we have to, you know, use a rebuke when maybe we want to use it on something else. And fighting back against Mamuna, this is what pains me to see because, you know, having geared and spent early on is pretty annoying for this specific reason. We knew that M Mamuna was coming when we saw Imlareth boosting by nine, so it's one of those things. They usually play them as a pair. Such a bad pull. <laughs> we get two points on our side, they get an engine that actually boosts at the same time. I wasn't planning for that whatsoever. You know, that card's not like in circulation a whole lot. Like, I haven't seen too many decks that are running it. Um, that's annoying. So, we got Pig there. We can remove that with Trial because it's going to be worth, what, 12 points by the end of the game if we let it live. We're down 25 to 12 in this case, and seeing the extra pig come down is pretty scary. I want to roll a protector here into a sorceress, into a bomb. That's ideally what we're looking for. I don't pull it, and it just seems like the one time we need it, you know, we don't have it. Archer is the best play here. We'll just hit it off the pig. I never miss. Just to feel like we're doing something. It really doesn't matter what we're pinging down at that point. But you, you do know that, like with all the provisions that they would have spent in round one, they don't have a lot left. So I'm feeling pretty confident with that. Um, I'm not sure why Megascope went down on melee. Unless they play something beside it, we are going to get some value on the Tiger. Okay, so that, that works out well with the, with the Ghoul. A little click there, Gord's worked too much. So... You know, we were able to fight back even though we had a tough time earlier on. 